Performance points are in a weird state right now. In case you didn't know, the PP algorithm is managed directly in Laser's code, affecting game elements like the PP counter and the result screen. Other places you see PP, like the leaderboards or your profile, are processed by OSU servers. Usually this distinction doesn't matter, both Laser and the servers are supposed to use the same algorithm, but right now, they're out of sync. New changes to the PP system were just applied to Laser in this update, and they'll be applied to the servers in the coming weeks, so we're going to talk about what's new with performance points. You've probably experienced something like this before. In the previous PP system, that score would be worthless compared to, say, this. Both of these scores were just single misses, but the one missing at the end was previously valued much more because that's how combo scaling works. People didn't like that, so they finally got rid of it. Under the new PP system, a miss in the middle of a map and a miss at the end of a map are worth the same amount of PP. The main thing which I'm still working through is that with the removal of the combo portion of PP, it means that if you get a new highest total score but it has a lower PP value, it will still delete the lower total score from the database. We've already fixed this issue in Laser with the new infrastructure, but scores submitted via stable don't fully use the new infrastructure yet, which is to say that process probably needs to be changed as we do this new deploy, otherwise people are going to notice it happening a lot more because now that PP doesn't have combo considerations in it, the relationship between total score and PP is a lot less proportionate than it used to be. So there's a lot more chance of scores getting wiped. Does that make sense? Have I explained that well? You might have noticed that top players have been in the speed meta for a while now, but not for reasons solely related to the speed portion of PP. Rather, there were oversights in how rhythm and aim played into speed. For rhythm, certain things were giving too much PP, like repeated triples or long bursts, while properly complex rhythm wasn't giving enough PP. Both cases have been adjusted. These now give less PP, these give more. And for AIM, this one only affects the topmost of top players. Highly spaced streams above like 250 BPM were giving too much PP for the flow type of AIM, which has now been reduced. Okay, um, let me see if I understand this. So let's say, let's say I SS just any map on stable, then I SS the same map on laser. Laser has slider head accuracy, so it should be like harder to get an SS. Does that mean the laser score will be worth more PP than the stable score? I would hope so. So that is the intention there. Okay. Uh, no, that, that's, that's my hope. I don't know if it's oh. the intention of the change because I didn't write the change, but um, if it's not that way, then something is probably wrong because that just makes sense, right? That's mostly how it works, but of course it's more complicated. This graph shows how the accuracy portion of PP was calculated before today's update. When C, or the amount of circles in the map, goes up, the accuracy portion of PP goes up. When it reaches around 1600 circles, accuracy PP stops increasing. That's just the limit. Okay, now let's reset. When you increase S, the slider count, nothing happens because slider heads have no accuracy component. Except that's just a lie, it's outdated. Sliders and laser do affect accuracy, so the formula was adjusted. As of today's update, when the amount of sliders goes up, it acts the same as circles. So what this actually means is on maps with less than about 1600 circles, laser can reward more PP than stable. The deployment process is going to be similar to what we historically did, which is updating the star rating of all beat maps while we already turn off PP calculations just so there's no um, values flying around when we're running the calculations. And once we have star ratings updated, we need to recalculate the PP values of every score to date. There's a lot of scores and we're using a new process for this. So we need to make sure that it's running fast enough I, I'm saying that it's going to take a month because the old process took around a month, but we still took shortcuts with the old process, like we didn't process inactive users. So there's been this ongoing issue where a user will come back from not playing the game for three years and their PP values are like calculated with a really old calculation method. I'm hoping to kind of address that and a few other issues. 
Yeah, this, this PP deploy isn't just updating PP, it's also attempting to resolve some of the ongoing discrepancies in PP values for users and trying to have a clean slate. All, all scores have correct PP. The PP values match in laser, in stable, in OS tools, wherever you want to calculate it, it's going to give you the same PP and star rating. And then from that point, we can start to hopefully make some more rapid changes if we need to. So yeah, the PP algorithm changes we covered, plus more for other modes that I'm unqualified to talk about, will be fully implemented when Peppy is through with this checklist. And if you're desperate to see these PP changes in action, you can set scores in laser, then look at either the PP counter or the result screen. Both are being calculated with the new algorithm. Believe it or not, this laser update isn't just PP. There are actual laser updates. Alibombi's editor improvement saga continues in this update with a completely new grid button on the left side here, which generates a grid center point on the first click, then adjusts the spacing and rotation on the second click. Or if you don't like how this turned out, you can reselect grid, then right click to go back to default. And of course the new center point works with the flip commands and the rotation and scale tools. Pretty useful. And here are a couple quality of life features. You can drag while holding control to select more objects, and these buttons stay in the same position until you move your mouse. Previously, they would follow objects, so you couldn't just spam the button. Uh, Spaceman set out to do the redesign of the editor setup screen, and his main goals were, because it was just stretched to the screen width, it meant that slider bars could get really long. That was one of his primary concerns, and the other one was being able to type values into slider bars. In the process, he also implemented one of the designs for all the form controls, which is like buttons, text boxes, slider bars, drop downs, all those things. We'll be using this as like a test bed to see how people react to the new designs and making sure they feel good to users, because if they do, then they're going to be rolled out to the rest of the game. There's been like a lot of feature requests for being able to enter values into settings like the tablet. People want to enter a very specific value and it's hard to drag the mouse to that specific value. And once, once we roll this out, that will be possible as one example. Oh, the hotkey stuff is amazing, by the way. Now you, now you can see hotkeys in like all the menus and stuff and just makes the editor feel a lot more professional. Last update added these replay analysis features, and it should have been expected that mods would break things. Each of these cases you're seeing have now been fixed, so you can finally analyze your weirdest plays without issue. And meanwhile in the skin editor, there's more flexibility with editing player avatars, and a bunch of skin elements have color customization. So this is a pretty cool one. I think it's only been implemented in a few elements so far, but you can finally change the color of some things in the skin editor. One hope would be to allow this to be applied to basically every element, but it kind of needs um, contextual implementation for the elements to be like, oh, this one has text elements, so we want to have the text color exposed. We have a flow for it now, so that's cool. It's, it's very easy to do this stuff. We just need someone to go through and add, add it in place now. Small Ketchup has been spending his time updating Laser outside of Laser. And by that, I mean he noticed how confusing this pop-up was and decided to make Laser actually be labeled as Laser in Windows. And on top of that, he was going to add this little icon to beatmap files associated with Laser, which ended up causing Flight to redesign the icon entirely. So thanks, Flight. And one last change, this button now exists. You can figure out what it does. You know, I've been trying to get to the PB stuff, that's my main focus, but I've also had to um, redo the way we do code signing over the last month. What is code signing exactly? Um, so there's that Windows smart screen, Windows Defender thing that pops up when you run an app that isn't code signed because we're publishing applications that can potentially destroy people's systems. It's making sure that there's some kind of responsibility layer in there where if a dev does something bad, Microsoft can pull the plug on them and that app will no longer run on people's PCs. Yeah, our code signing certificate was expiring and I looked into renewing it and the renewing process is always a pain in the ass, but they've actually changed the requirements now and you need to use a hardware key. Like they'll send you out a USB dongle, which you have to use to do the code signing now. And we can't use that because we're making builds on GitHub Actions. So I had to completely rewrite the process for both Laser and Stable to use um, Microsoft's new cloud signing thing. Damn, I, I just didn't think this would be such like a complicated task. Yeah, you, ne you need to contact a company and then verify your business and give them like utility bills to, to verify your address and stuff, that, that kind of process. Um, right. But using the Microsoft cloud signing, I didn't have to submit anything because I guess Microsoft already have enough information about me. 